Hey guys, Mr. Mises here, and we're going to do a little bit of calculus with polar coordinates here. So polar equations, we're going to be doing tangent lines. So let's take a look at how we find tangent lines for polar equations. Now, the thing about polar equations, you can just think about them. Think of, We're really going to use the techniques that we did with parametric equations with polar coordinates. So what we need to do is we need to convert things into x and y so that we can find dy dx. And we're going to use that same technique we did with parametric equations with dy dx in terms of taking the uh, dy d theta divided by dx d theta. For parametric equations, we did dy dt over dx dt. Well, this was just a little different because we're using r and theta. So the so first thing we're going to do is we always change, we got to change things into x. So we know here that r equals 2 minus 2 sine theta. So x is our cosine theta, right? So x is really r, which was 2 minus 2 sine theta times cosine theta. So now we're going to find dx d theta. So dx d theta is going to be, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to change this to 2 cosine theta minus 2 sine theta cosine theta. All right, so dx d theta is uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so 2 sine theta minus, and I have to do a product rule here. So the derivative of sine is cosine, so that's going to give me 2 cosine theta times cosine theta, which is 2 cosine squared theta, plus the derivative of cosine is negative, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I'm going to have negative sine times sine, which is going to be negative sine. So it's going to be not a plus, it's going to be a minus. 2 sine squared theta. All right. So that's going to be negative 2 sine theta minus 2 cosine squared theta plus 2 sine squared theta. Now I want to find dy d theta, and first of all, in order to find dy d theta, I need to find y equals r sine theta, which is going to be 2 minus 2 sine theta, because I'm just using my r here and substituting it in. So I'm going to have 2 sine theta minus 2 sine squared theta. So dy d theta is going to be 2... Oops, 2 cosine theta, the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of sine squared theta is going to be 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. I've got to do a chain rule for that one. All right, so now that I have dy d theta and dx d theta, I can go ahead and put them together to get dy dx by taking dy d theta, which is 2 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta cosine theta, and divide it by dx d theta, which was negative 2 sine theta minus 2 cosine squared theta plus 2 sine squared theta. All right, so there's our dy dx. Now I want to evaluate that at theta equals zero because I want at the point two zero remember this is r and this is theta so I'm evaluating this at theta equals zero notice I got nothing but thetas in there so I'm just gonna plug theta equals zero in there and theta uh, theta cosine of zero is one so I'm gonna have two minus zero over sine theta is zero minus two plus zero which gives me negative 1. So that's my slope. So I'm going to have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. My slope is negative 1. What's my y coordinate for 2 comma 0? I'm going to plug that in right here. Okay, so I'm going to plug in theta equals 0 right there, and that's going to give me 0 for y. And then I'm going to plug theta equals 0 for x right here and that's going to give me 2 for x minus 2 all right and there's my equation of my tangent line all right it's not too bad it looks like a lot of work there a lot of thetas but it's just because we're taking a lot of 
derivative stuff there, okay? Let's take a look, look at another one here. Find the points at which the graph has tangent, horizontal tangent lines. So horizontal tangent lines happen when the derivative is equal to zero. So what I want to do is I really want to find for what values will the derivative be equal to zero. Now they don't tell me here whether or not these have to be in rectangular or polar points. So it's much easier to just find them in polar points since we're already dealing with polar coordinates. So we're going to do the same thing we did last time and we're going to find we're going to find x first. So we're going to x equals r cosine. So x equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta times cosine theta which is 2 cosine theta minus 4 cosine squared theta. And we're going to find dx d theta. So we're going to have negative 2 sine theta minus 8 cosine theta times, oh, that's going to end up being a plus because I'm going to do the derivative of the inside. Again, that's chain rule, derivative of the inside. And then I'm going to do the same thing here for y is r sine theta which is 2 minus 2 cosine theta times sine theta, which is 2 sine theta minus 2 cosine theta sine theta, and dy d theta is going to be 2 cosine theta minus, now here I have to do a product rule, right? So I've got to do a product rule for this one. And the product rule is going to be the derivative of the first. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to have 2 sine squared plus the derivative of, oops, I forgot my negative. The derivative of sine is going to be cosine, so 2 cosine squared. Okay, which all laid out is going to be 2 cosine theta plus 2 sine squared theta minus 2 cosine squared theta. Okay, so now we know that a horizontal tangent comes when dy dx is equal to 0. Now, dy dx equal to 0 would be that the numerator is equal to 0. Vertical tangents is when the denominator equal to 0. Now, how do we find dy dx? We do dy d theta over dx d theta. So really, to find horizontal tangents, it's when dy d theta is equal to 0. So really, I'm just going to look at that one, and I'm going to solve that one. Now, in order to solve this, I'm going to need to do a little bit of tricky trigonometry, and I'm going to change sine squared to 1 minus cosine squared using the Pythagorean identity. And I'm going to have 2 cosine theta plus 2 minus 2 cosine squared theta minus 2 cosine squared theta equals 0. All right, and then I am going to... I'm going to go and factor out a, let's go ahead and put these together, 2 cosine theta plus 2 minus 4 cosine squared theta equals 0. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my work here. I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 2, and I'm going to have, I'm going to fact, you know what I'm going to, I'm going to do? I'm going to factor out a negative 2, negative 2. So then I'm going to have 2 cosine squared theta minus, minus cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. All right, then I can go and factor this, factor this part into 2 cosine theta plus 1 times cosine theta minus 1. And I'm going to have cosine theta equals negative one half. Cosine theta equals one. Fun with algebra, guys, right? Okay, so when is the cosine theta equals one half? Well, we've got theta values at two pi over three and four pi over three. And the cosine theta equals one at zero. But, you know, we really don't have a theta value of zero in this case because uh, it can't be because of the denominator over here. All right, so we've got horizontal tangents at 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. 
So it says what points. So in order to find the points, we're going to go and plug it back in here to find my R value. And I'm going to have the points 3 comma 2 pi over 3 and 3 comma 4 pi over 3. When all is, and I'm going to move this up just in case I'm blocking the view, and all is said and done, that's what we're going to end up with our points. All right, let's go on to one last type of problem here that we have with these. It's called finding tangents at a pole. Now, the pole is when there's right in the middle, there's no R, okay, or so R is zero. So what I'm going to do here is when I, if I saw this on, you know, if I looked at the picture, the picture kind of looks like this. All right, so that's what the picture looks like. What we're talking about is, oh man, it's just like this. What we're talking about is we're talking about this tangent line here, this tangent line here, this tangent line here, the ones that go through the origin, what we call the pole. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to set our function equal to zero, and we're going to solve for theta. So we're going to divide by four. Sine of three theta equals zero. So where is the sine zero? That's going to be at zero, pi, two pi, and so forth. I'm going to divide everything by three. We get zero, pi over three, two pi over three, and so forth. So guess what, guys? This is an equation of a line in polar form. Theta equals zero is this straight line right here. Theta equals pi over three is this straight line over there. Theta equals two pi over three or is this straight line over there. All right, after that, they repeat. So really, we just have to look at this. So those are the tangent lines at the pole. All right, guys, good luck. Here you go, polar coordinates. We'll see you next time.